If you're thinking about putting together a home theater system, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. What I'm going to talk about now is going to be pretty much the basics. So what I want to do is I want to give you a pretty basic overview to help you get started. So this guide is going to cover the basics, okay? There's basically four things that you're going to need. The first thing is going to be a source, which you probably have already, which is going to be your TV, your game system, anything that's playing a disc, that's your source. Okay, then there's going to be three other things that you need, which you kind of have to purchase at the same time. I mean, if you don't purchase them at the same time, you know, they're not going to work. So the first thing is going to be your home theater receiver, okay? This is your amplifier and this is where everything is going to be um, switched from. So when you press these buttons up here, you can see this game, this cable TV, I mean maybe you can't see it, but your receiver is going to switch everything, okay? Everything you have hooked up to it, all your components, it's going to be switched. And this is also your amplifier and this is going to be, and this is also going to put out um, the sound for how many speakers you have in the room. So you have to decide how many speakers you want in your room. If you want two speakers, three speakers, four speakers, um, 11 speakers, that's something that you have to decide. Those are also called channels, okay? So if your receiver is a 5.1 channel, it's gonna be five speakers, plus your subwoofer, which is right over here, that would be a 0.1 channel. Okay, so if it's 7.1, it's going to be seven speakers plus one subwoofer, and so on. I'm going to get into some of the configurations using the receivers on screen menu in a little bit. So, receiver, this is really important. Your sound quality is only as good as your source, first of all. Okay, the source, whatever's playing, if it's a disc, if you're playing something on a disc, you know, it's only as good as the source unit that's playing it. If you're watching a movie that's streamed, um, it's only going to be as good as, as, as the uh, streaming uh, company um, or your TV um, or whatever is playing your source. So keep that in mind. The next thing that's going to affect the quality is the quality of the amp that's in the receiver, okay? You could buy amps separately, but that's very, very very expensive and probably something that you would want to do later on. Now, this guide is really for somebody that's just starting out. So what you, what you do want to do is, is, is you want to try to pick out a receiver that's going to be as high quality for the budget that you have. Okay, because you have to come up with a budget kind of before you start picking things out. Unless if you have like, you know, $2,000 and you're ready to go, then you could just sit back and you could look at the price of everything, put it all together, and if it fits that um, amount, you're good. But if you're going to be buying things in little pieces, and that's really what this video is about, buying things more so in little pieces, um, you know, you have to do it a little bit differently. So with that said, your receiver. The next thing is going to be your speaker wire, okay? <clears throat> now with speaker wire, speaker wire is, is rated with something called gauge, okay? So you're gonna see like uh, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, um, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, 12 gauge. The higher the number, the thinner the wire, okay? So what you really want is you wanna look at 14 gauge or 12 gauge, which is even thicker. Now there's gonna be copper clad aluminum, which is copper with aluminum mixed, aluminum conducts very poorly compared to copper. So if you have 16 gauge wire that's aluminum and 16 gauge that's copper, the copper is going to conduct much better than the aluminum. So I suggest stay away from the copper clad aluminum, pick yourself up solid copper wire. Um, I mean, it, it can be um, strands, of course, it doesn't have to be like thick. Uh, solid copper, um, it, you know, probably shouldn't be because speaker wire typically comes in, um, it's like strands and then you twist it. <coughs> so, with that said, you know, pick yourself up copper wire. Uh, 14 gauge is great uh, if you're going to run, you know, about 50 feet or less. If you're going to go over 50 feet, I believe they typically, uh, you know, tend to say use 12 gauge. 
I tend to use 14 gauge more so on very short runs, like I'm going from here to, to here, uh, here, here to there, um, or I just use 12 gauge uh, altogether, um, you know, for my rear speakers, which are typically uh, 25 feet away or so, uh, you know, 12 gauge, maybe 14 gauge, it depends. Sometimes I end up with extra wire depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, typically the price of wiring, you know, there isn't that much of a difference. So if you're gonna, if you, you know, if, 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 you, if you're only saving $10 or $20, you know, uh, purchase something better because, you know, the, the wiring is, is going to affect your sound quality. All right, so now we have the first three of the four, which is the source unit, the receiver, and the wiring. Now comes for the big one, the speakers. Now the speakers can get very confusing. But this is the back of a home theater receiver, by the way. This is, this is where you hook up your speakers to. So your front left, your front right, your center, all that stuff, it's all right here. Okay, so speakers. The cheapest speaker typically is going to be a satellite speaker. Satellite speakers are small. You can see it's 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 in my hand. Um, it's pretty it's pretty light. They're usually under a pound or so a piece. You can see the size of it. It's easy to hang. And this one has a keyhole in the back. You would um, I'll put a mount in, into a stud in the wall. Make sure you find the stud. Mount it, or you could do something like this, where um, you know put some felt or something on the bottom. And then, you know, you could put that speaker anywhere, so you could put them around the room if you don't want to mount them. <clears throat> Satellite speakers are, are usually the cheapest because they are small. And you could see, like, how much material it takes to make this compared to, you know, this large center channel over here. I mean, look how many of these speakers. You could probably make four of these satellites for the same amount of materials, um, you know, they use with this. So satellites, this is probably going to be the cheapest route to go. Uh, quite possibly some of the speakers um, you know, that you purchase might be satellites as well. So you might have large speakers and you might have some small speakers. So it's all gonna depend on your budget and your room setup and how many uh, speakers you want. Okay, so satellites. If you're on a budget, you know, always look for satellites first. Check the pricing. The next thing is going to be bookshelf speakers. Bookshelf speakers are called bookshelf speakers for just that reason. You put them on a bookshelf. You could, or you could purchase speaker stands, and you know the speaker will stand up. This particular speaker has a five and a quarter inch woofer, and it has a tweeter over here, which I think is um, I think it's a one inch or something like that on this. One um, in the back is a port, so this is where some of the bass comes out, and here's where you would connect your speaker wires to it. So you connect your speaker wires, and then that would connect. The wire would go here, and then the wire would go into the back of the receiver. Okay, so if you're on a budget, this is what I recommend: get yourself a set of bookshelf speakers, but Maybe not this small. So what I'm saying is purchase something larger. So let's, let's, let's pretend that this center channel speaker is actually a bookshelf speaker, okay? Because they make them, you don't see them. Uh, typically, it'll be a two-way. So let's give it the mid-range. So you'll have your tweeter, and then you'll have a woofer, and another woofer. So these two would handle the mid-bass. In this case, this is a three-way speaker because it's got a mid-range and then it has your woofers. This is a two-way speaker, okay, because it just has your woofer and your tweeter. <clears throat> With that said, I would purchase a set of uh, bookshelf speakers that have at least two, two woofers, so two five and a quarters or two six and a halves, and then that way you could start off with them using them as your main left and your main right channel and set your receiver to large. Now, I don't like tower speakers that are like this. So let's just say this exact speaker with this five and a quarter 
and five and a quarter inch woofer and this tweeter were in a big casing like that, okay? Um, you're spending a lot of money on the cabinet. Yeah, it'll put out a little bit better bass because the bass is ported and it's channeled throughout chambers and whatever else on the inside, but you're not getting too much more for your money with the, with the, um, with the uh, sound quality than you would with this, okay? So what I'm saying is purchase yourself a two-way with two woofers for your front left and front right, and then that way you could start off with those, and eventually you're gonna move those to the rear, okay? So you're gonna start off with them in the front, and then you're gonna move them off to the rear, and I'm gonna show you that on the screen when I bring it up. Okay, so I would start off with the bookshelf speaker, unless you're gonna start off with the satellites. If you start off with satellites, you absolutely positively need a subwoofer, okay? If you're gonna go with the bookshelf speakers, then the subwoofer would probably be last. Again, this is for a budget, which means, you know, you're putting this system together over the course of weeks or months or, you know, maybe, you know, a year or two um, or more possibly. Tower speakers, okay, this is a tower speaker right here. When you're buying a tower speaker, make sure the components of it are really a tower speaker. Again, you don't want something like this just in a larger cabinet. You want something like this, okay? This speaker has a tweeter over here, I know you can't see it. Here's a mid-range, here's a mid-range. Here is a 10-inch sub, here is a passive radiator sub, another 10-inch. On the other side is another 10-inch passive radiator. In the back, right where my finger is, is another mid-range. There's one here, which is exactly in the same place this one is. And then another tweeter, okay, which is firing off the wall. I and mean, this is a tower speaker, okay? If you're gonna buy big speakers, make sure it has a lot of drivers, or a lot of speakers in the speaker. Again, don't buy something like that in the tower because they do sell them. I, I personally feel like you're just getting ripped off. Um, okay, your subwoofer, your subwoofer, this is where you know, most of the heaviest bass with your movies is going to come out of. It's going to come out of your subwoofer. You really want a quality sub, especially if you're using satellite. So the smaller the speakers, the more bass is going to be sent into your subwoofer, so it has to work harder, and it really should be more powerful than if you have large tower speakers like these, because a ton of bass um, coming from movies is sent to these speakers. But I have these speakers on the receiver set to large, okay? So the bass is not, is not being sent into the sub, for these speakers. The bass, some of the bass for the center channel goes into there because the center channel can't handle the lowest bass. If I was using speakers like this, um, a lot of bass, maybe around 80 hertz or 60 hertz, would be sent to the sub, anything underneath that. Okay, I know that was a lot and it was, it was a bit of a um, crash course, but at least now you have an idea of what you have to look for and the things that you should know when you're shopping. So the next thing is going to be the menu to show you the different formats and the way to go, um, you know, especially if you are on a budget. So let's take a look at that. This is the menu for the Ankyo TX RZ E40. It's considered Ankyo's flagship receiver. So let's take a look now at the speaker options. Put a little past the camera. So let's come over here. Now you can see the configuration. So right now what I'm running is a 5.1.4. And you can see that what I have in my rear is I have two speakers that are set to large and then I have two speakers that are set to small. In the front, I have two towers, 
I have a center channel, I have a sub. And now on top, on top of my front left, and it's my front left, excuse me, and my front right speaker, I have a Dolby speaker. That's called a Dolby Atmos speaker. Okay, so it's considered a Dolby speaker. That's what was sitting on top of my tower, um, which was right above the little silver line. So this is 5.1.4 now. Your point four is your height channels, anything that's high. So it's these heights that are sitting on top of the front speaker, plus these heights that are sitting on top of the, um, uh, the back wall, or should I say on top of the bookshelf where I have them, which because the bookshelf's about six feet high or so, and they're sitting on top of the bookshelf, but that's how it looks. So now let's kind of go through this menu over here. You could see, like I was saying, here's a Dolby speaker, okay? So you can move them, so you can make it front high if you want to. Um, you could put them on, uh, up in the ceiling if you wanted to put them up in the ceiling. Um, you know, you could, you could move these things around. It's pretty flexible. The same thing with the rear. See now there's heights on top over there. Um, back up in the ceiling, um, you know, rear heights. Um, so let me just get that back where it was. Now let's go through the menu here of the different speaker configurations. Let's start at the basics. So my logic behind the two speakers that are the large speakers that are a bookshelf speaker, which is gonna have the uh, two woofers, like I was saying, is you know you could put them in front. So you'll start off with them in front. Now the point one, that's your subwoofer. So let's just say right now we're on a budget, right? So we're on a budget, so let's, what is that? I'm pointing it the wrong way. Okay, so I just, see, I got this on yes, the sub, now the sub's on no. So now the sub's on no, it's actually just a two channel. So all your bass, everything is gonna go to your left and right. This is how you would start off. So you would have your speaker wire, your receiver, and your two speakers to start. The next step up, which adds a center channel over here, I would not do this unless if you were only going to do three channels, maybe you want to do three channels plus a sub, you know, that's what you could do with um, this receiver if you wanted to. But on a budget, I would not spend the money on a center channel speaker next. This is where I would go to. I would go to 4.1, um, but I would not have the sub yet. Okay, so I'm holding back on the sub. The reason for this is, You've just purchased those two bookshelves that I mentioned, right? So you have them in the front. Now, the next step for you would be to decide if you want to take those speakers that you purchased for the front and move them off to your rear, okay? So now they would be sitting in the rear if that's what you'd want to do. Because then you could come and you could buy a good pair of speakers for the front left and the front right, move those bookshelves to the rear, and now those are being used for your rear surrounds, okay? If not, you're happy with them, you know, maybe you wanna purchase another pair or a different type of speaker, that would be up to you. Okay, so after that, the next thing would be, you know, you could add your sub, okay? Excuse me, your, your center channel. Um, this would give you five channels, okay? Then after that, you would add your sub and you would be done if you're doing a five speaker setup, okay? If you're not doing a five speaker setup, what I would say is get rid of the sub again, and not because the sub isn't important, it really is, it's important. But these speakers are, what, are, are what's going to add to the motion, okay? The, the front to rear, the, um, you know, the the back left to the front right, the sweeping sounds, planes flying overhead, um, all kinds of things in movies firing all over the room, explosions, all that stuff. So that's the reason why you want this first. Now you can move up to 6.1. Um, you know, you could, you could also do this uh, before purchasing your center channel speaker. So at least you would have two speakers in the rear, you'd have your left, um, your uh, left surround, your right surround, your right surround back, your left surround back, and of course, you know, there's your TV with your front two speakers. So this would create 
a um, circle of speakers around you, so to speak, and sound would be you know, going from every speaker in, in each direction all around. Lastly, you can add your center channels speaker and then if you want to, which you know you really should, you'd add your subwoofer and now you would have a full 7.1 setup. Let's just say you want to go higher than 7.1. So let's do it here. Let's let me... Okay, so these would be different setups that you might want to do potentially before you go to nine or if your room only allows it. So let's just say let's just say that you know you only have this one wall to work with. You got your TV and you got speakers. So what you want to do is do something like this. You would do 3.1 and either have the Dolby speaker sitting on top or do something like this with front highs. I mean, if you wanted to cut holes in your ceiling um, or have somebody do it for you, you know, that's another way to go. But, you know, this right here would, would sound really excellent and make for a nice front sound stage. Um, I have tried it out. It does sound good, but of course it's lacking because there's no surround speakers behind you. So, those, so all that overhead flying and things whizzing by in movies, bullets and stuff, um, you know, you're not going to have it. Okay, so let's continue now. So now you can do a 4.1.2. Now remember your point two are your two height channels up here. So your subwoofer again, whether you want it or not. Uh, to me, I, I, would, I would personally purchase a sub at the end. Um, you know, especially if you have really good speakers in the front left and front right. Maybe your speakers that you purchase have a built-in sub. Um, you know, that, that would really change things. That, that would really change it. You know, there's so many different ways to configure this. Okay, so 5.1.2, we just added the center channel in there. 6.1.2, again, you have your whole circle of speakers around you, and now you got two heights. <clears throat> so 7.1.2, you could see now we have a full nine channel setup because you got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speakers all around, plus your point one is your sub, and the two is there, okay? So the, the sub um, really doesn't, is, it, it's kind of like when they say, you know, a, a 7.1, you know, it's seven speakers plus your sub. If it's 9.1, you know, that's this, or you could call it 7.1.2. And here's another way to do it, 4.1.4. Uh, the side speakers are eliminated. Now this is back to the setup that I have that we started off with. So you can really see that there's a lot of flexibility. It just depends on, you know, your room. It depends on what you feel you need. It depends on, you know, your personal budget. But you can, you can do it for a lot cheaper than you think. Try to pick out the equipment first. And after you pick out the equipment, then wait for sales. And when you wait for sales, you'll end up with a great system that would have cost you way more than if you purchased it for full price. Now this is 7.1.4, this is the most this receiver can do. For this, I need to hook up an extra amp. I need to hook up an amp for two more channels, but you could see all the speakers around the room now, because now we have four channels up high, so we've got one, two, three, four, and then the seven all around. Okay, so it's very different, but again, this is how we started off. Put my receiver back to where it was. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, please post it in the comments. I hope you enjoy your journey towards a fantastic home theater. Thank you.